Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we're in a new week and this is the last week of the month of February. Praise God, the month ends this week. I think the month ends on Thursday, this week, 29th of February. And it's been a wonderful year so far. When I say wonderful, now, sometimes... Uh, people say, someone says it's good, someone says, oh no, it's not good, it, it has been a bad year. But when we say it's been a wonderful year, I want you to understand this. First and foremost, God had spoken about this year. And so our compass for judgment is not what is happening. Our compass for judgment is that the happenings is in line with what God has said. There's a, that's very important for you to note and understand. So it's important to know what the mind of God is. Then number two, it's important your judgment is in line with God's word. Okay, so there is nothing happening today that God did not speak about. Those who have ears to hear heard the things the Lord said concerning the year and the seasons that we are entering into. And while I was preparing for this broadcast, the Lord opened my eyes to see something. And after which he asked me to command you or warn you. And that's what I'm about to do now. So please pay attention to this because it's very, very serious. The Lord opened my eyes to see an angel going round. Now, when, 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 we, when we speak visions we have seen, sometimes people try to be logical in their minds and, and they try to dispute what you're saying. It's a vision. Now, when God is showing you vision, He's showing you the way you will understand, okay? So, it's the message. It's not the... It's not the specific description of things. The Lord showed me an angel, and the angel was going around and marking people. Now, while I was preparing for this broadcast, to do this recording, the Lord opened my eyes to see that. I saw an angel going around and marking people. So while I was wondering what, what's going on, why are they marking them? And I was aware that the situation of things were so bad or was so bad in the, in the area where the angel was marking out people. But the angel kept going and marking, marking and marking. He wasn't marking everybody. He would go over some people and mark some. And so while I was wondering on that, the word of the Lord came to me. And this is what the Lord said. Now, you see, when you speak by the word of the Lord, you don't try to convince people. You either accept it or you don't accept it. Those that have ears to hear will hear. Those that want to dispute, go ahead and dispute. I have no problem with that. My job, if God says, if you see the sword coming, you will warn the people for me. If you warn them and they refuse to heed, they die in their sins, but you're free from their blood. But if you now begin to consider, ah, people will not, people, I don't want people to say this, I don't want people to say this, and you don't give them the warning. They will die, but God will require their blood from your hands. So this is a word to every prophet of God, every true prophet of God. You don't fear the people, especially in these days of social media, that you can just say one thing so innocently, and people twist it and turn it the other way, and people are careful how they speak. But remember, you've been instructed, if any man should speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If you've spoken the truth, doesn't matter how anyone wants to twist it, you have spoken, and those you have spoken to will hear you. And heaven will take record that you have spoken as you were commanded. And that's it. Every true prophet should have this mindset. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So when I saw this angel marking people, I heard the word of the Lord. 
And the Lord said to me, warn your people. Now that's, that's how God talks to me sometimes. Warn your people to be serious with their tithing and their offerings. And as I heard that command, see, um, I'll try and explain these things to you in a way you would understand. Because God doesn't speak words. You understand what I mean? I mean God doesn't speak, He doesn't speak English. See, He speaks by light. And when He brings light into your spirit, then you begin to decode. And that's where understanding comes from. So the Lord said, one, your people to be very serious with tithes and offerings. Now, because of everything the Lord has already taught me, He has taught me deep things. He's taught me things concerning this season. He's taught me things about tithes. And in December, I did a series on, on tithes and offering. You can go um, listen to it. Or if you did, maybe go, go check it again. And the moment I heard those words, the scripture came to my spirit. When, when David, speaking by the Spirit of God, said, gather my people unto me, those who have made covenant unto me by sacrifice. Then I understood what the marking was for. The marking was for preservation. Like I said, in that vision, a lot of darkness was going on. And remember, God spoke that this year is going to be the year for the children of light. So I saw a lot of darkness going on, but in the midst of this darkness, this angel was going and marking people. And then the Lord says, warn them, tithes and offerings they should be serious with it. I have told you before now, anybody who's telling you not to tithe, anybody who's telling you not to give offerings, they are simply walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm not apologetic about that. And that is the truth. If it doubts me, we will meet in heaven one day. I don't doubt, I don't, I don't, I don't pray you miss heaven. Praise God. We will meet before the Lord. And he's going to clarify it. But I speak boldly as the Lord has commanded me. Anyone who have told you not to tithe, I didn't say he is the Antichrist. I say he's walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. They've been beaten by the serpent. And the venom of the serpent is walking in them. And they are manifesting that venom unknowingly, most of them. Some knowingly. The reason is they are, they are, the intent is to take you away from the covenant of God. I'm telling you the truth. Now, anyone can use anything to trick anybody. Anyone can use any word or message to confuse people. But you see these things, tithes and offerings, now, when someone talks about this, someone says, hey, they have come, they want your money. Okay, whatever you want to think. Whatever you want to think. But I'll finish the word of the Lord and I'll know I've done my part. Because I understand I'm not speaking to everybody. There are those that have ears to hear. And that, those are the ones I'm concerned about. If those ones hear, and change and repent the job is done because those are the ones God is looking for any minister who thinks the whole world will accept him is a joker because the world will live in majority of the people who find in the world they are not children of God talk less of meeting them on social media majority are not children of God so find the sons of God and be a blessing to them Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, be very, very deliberate about your tithing, about your offerings. You remember Malachi? He didn't say you have robbed me in tithes. He said in tithes 
and in offerings. So now people think, oh, offerings are free will gifts. Tithe is the one. No, in offerings, you have first fruit offering. I did a series in, in December. You have first fruit offering. That's part of offerings. And if you don't give it, you're robbing God. You're robbing God. It's the truth. You're robbing him. That honor belongs to him. People say first fruit is not money. Who told you that? Oh, it's not money. Is 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 some say it's food crop. Some say no, it's, it's a type. Hey, hey, physical people living on earth take actions to demonstrate their faith. Why do we tithe? It's a demonstration of our faith. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So where is your work? If you believe God is your source, that's your faith. Where is the works that follow it? The works that follow it is this. When you see me tithe faithfully and in honor, Titan is not just about giving the money. Titan is in honor to the one in whom you are in partnership with. And he is the senior partner. The senior partner requests only 10%. So that's the first thing you do. If you, I'm taking time to explain this to you. If you miss the honor part of Titan, you're a gambler. The first thing, the moment you see that money, what stirs up in your heart is your tight. Is your tight. The moment you see it, Lord, the money has come. And so, Lord, I take out your portion and I honor you with it. Yes. You are tight. And then you take it out because it belongs to the Lord. Now, now I'm teaching on the, gl the, the, the glory of Jesus, but this is a warning the Lord commanded me to give you. Now, you take it because it belongs to God. And the God that it belongs to, he's alive today. He's not dead. You take that tight and you wait before him. Find a time to say, Lord, I've set your money aside. What would you have me do with it? And allow him instruct you. Whatever he tells you to do with it, do it. That's how you tithe. And let me talk a bit about fresh fruit. Like I said, go listen to the series I did in December. But because of this warning, it is important I add everything together. Now, I know there's been this controversy, you know, a pastor had said, your January salary, bring it to me. Now, see, like I said, in the days of social media, yeah, you, a lot of junk go out there and a lot of junk responses, especially. Now, here is the truth. First, the, 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 the principle of fast food is true. It's true. But then... Your January salary is not your first fruit. Not for everyone. Praise God. Your January salary is not your first fruit. Now, I know people have taught that. Oh, because it's the first month of the year. So, your salary for the first month. So, you know, I was talking to someone about this years ago. And I threw this argument. I said, okay, if January salary is your first fruit, imagine someone who got a job 1st of December. And he started working 1st of December. So he got his first salary from the job, that particular job, towards the end of December. Is that his first fruit? Of course, that is his first fruit. So he enters January again. From that same job, he gets his salary. Is that his first fruit also? Um, actually, you see, you see, that's the problem. Anything that doesn't stand sure, see that now? Man's doctrine has come into it. So January, January salary per se is not first fruit. What is first fruit? The first. If you are going to give first fruit from a job, it's got to be the first pay that came when you got that job. See? And then number two, if there is a raise in that job, that particular job, if there is a raise 
in that job. You give your first fruit. What is your first fruit? The first raise that you get from that job. For example, if you were paid 100,000 for the job previously and then you got a raise to 200,000. Now, what does that mean? The first time they pay you the 200, that raise, which is a hundred, is now your first fruit. The first one is your first fruit. And then you give it in honor to the Lord. And hear me, the first fruit belongs to the priest that God has set over you. There also is this argument, ah, the, the, hey, listen to me, the scripture is clear. Why does God command that you give the first fruit to the priest? He says, so that he, he, he didn't say so that God, he says, so that he, the priest, will command the blessing to rest in your house. So the priest needs to understand his responsibility when he receives the first fruits. You see that now? Now that's why you must believe that your pastor is the one God has placed over. You must believe him. If you don't believe him, then you're wasting your time taking your first fruit to him. Are you getting it now? Now that's the truth about first fruits. So you give it to him for this purpose. Now that's what God commanded. That he, so he has the authority to command the blessing to rest in your house when you bring the first fruits to him. Remember, tithe is you must be led by the Spirit of God to give your tithe. Your tithe does not belong to your church. Your tithe does not belong to any specific person or organization. No, the, the tithe is not your own. It belongs to God. The first fruit belongs to God, but God has commanded that it be given to the priest. If you don't do these two things, now every other offering when you go to church, you give offerings and, and every other donations and things you give, now that's what is called free will. But you see these two things, tithes and first fruit. If you don't give it, you are a thief. That's how God considers you. Now, do this, especially now, the Lord is saying, I should give this command. If you listen to me, do this. See, you think we've seen darkness. Oh, you've not seen darkness yet. There is deeper darkness. And it's not just in, in Africa. It's not just in Nigeria. It's in the whole world. There is darkness coming on the earth. You've not seen nothing yet. But God, when God warns, he exempts. If God is sending his warning, it's for the purpose of exempting you from it. Take note of this warning, I pray. I pray that you exempt yourself from the evil that is coming on the earth. Don't ask me why is God allowing evil to come on the earth. You can pray, ask him. But this is the truth. In his grace and his mercy, he's sending warning. Take hold of his warning. Change your life. Walk in obedience to the Lord. Don't say, oh, I, I, I will give God a bigger donation. To obey is better than sacrifice. If God have commanded an angel to come and mark those who are faithful in tithing, faithful in offerings, that's what he has sent. Anything out of that is none of the angel's business. So why don't you simply obey and uh, let the sacrifice be? Obedience is the key. I pray for you right now. Even as God has extended his hand of mercy on the earth, let that mercy locate you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the mercy of God locate you. Let the mercy of God locate you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. And this thing, don't forget, ask God for your daily bread. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.